everyone, Anarch here, with another installment of Anarch Abridged. This time the topic of the video is going to be why I'm an anarchist, or I guess more appropriately, how I became an anarchist. And in starting a story like that, I have a real tendency to just kind of start with when I was young. And when I was young, I remember always sort of having a, a doubt of authority figures. Um, I remember getting in trouble at school because I would be sort of like disrespectful to my teachers. And uh, I would come home and my parents would basically tell me that I needed to, to, you know, practice respect for my teachers and for the administrators and so on. And what I would respond is that, you know, respect has to be earned, uh, that, that they don't just deserve respect because they're in the position of authority, that if they don't deserve it, I'm not going to show them respect. And I think the reason why I saw it that way is because it, it it just kind of seemed like so often they didn't really deserve the position of authority that they had. Uh, they didn't really deserve the respect of that position of authority. And if anything, it, it almost seemed like they deserved less respect for abusing that position of authority to uh, presume that they deserved respect. That is to say, it was almost... Uh, that I was frustrated that they were uh, to be given respect for the simple fact that they had that position, that they didn't do anything to earn it, that they didn't like embody any values that, that should, that should deserve respect, but that instead I was just meant to, uh, you know, bow down, just be obedient for the sake of obedience. Uh, and, uh, that was always extremely unappealing to me, but I don't want to say that, this means uh, that I was an anarchist for that, or that that, that 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 represents anarchism in its purest form. But I guess what I'm trying to point out is that, you know, I've always had a sort of skepticism for authority. Um, I remember also just kind of being very young and, uh, for example, really not liking advertisements on television, but also kind of like identifying really early on that what I didn't like about them was that they were fake and that they were trying to essentially trick people into buying products that they didn't need or want. And uh, that kind of bothered me. It felt like that was some sort of uh, abuse of, of their position of authority, that that was sort of abuse of power. Um, but as I went through my teenage years, I was still basically just kind of a, I don't know, a boilerplate liberal, you might say. Uh, you know, I, I was coming of age during the time of George W. Bush uh, after 9-11, um, you know, uh, uh, during the escalation of the war in Iraq and, uh, and so on. And so it, it felt like sufficiently radical to just be like anti-government uh, or rather anti George W. Bush, anti the war in Iraq and so on. Um, you know, I, I, I still had this sort of like work inside the system mentality. Um, I was like generally socially progressive. So, you know, in my mind, it's just the liberals or bust, right? Like there was just no option to be a Republican. Um, I think the most entertainment of sort of Republican ideas I ever had, perhaps because I like grew up in Oklahoma, is just that I thought pro-gun arguments made sense. Uh, and that is to say, you know, for a variety of reasons, I thought they made sense. I thought like self-defense arguments made sense. And, you know, I, I, I also from a very uh, young age recognized that one of the reasons you'd probably want to have guns is to overthrow a tyrannous government. But, um, you know, that was sort of this, this far flung theoretical more than anything that I actually like entertained really. Um, you know. As we proceed through this, you know, uh, I was I was not like really dialed in to politics until um, uh, Barack Obama kind of got my attention. But it was really the 2008 financial crisis. 
And I, I've always kind of had this like skeptical stance. And, uh, I think a part of it came from the fact that, or I should say, I, I've always had this sort of skeptical stance towards corporations and business entities. Uh, and I think a big part of it came from the fact that when I was coming up through, through, uh, uh, liberalism and so on, the dialogue was a lot about like regulation and deregulation. And, and, you know, now I recognize in a historical sense, that's because the, the Republicans were really pushing a deregulationist agenda, uh, for many decades that had culminated at the time when I was, you know, paying attention, but it, it, I recognized really early on that corporations would abuse whatever um, uh, a leeway that you gave them. If you didn't regulate them, they would abuse that, that lack of regulations. Um, and there were just plenty of examples that I was aware of, but that kind of like seeded, uh, um, that seeded a, a really important question for me. Why is it that these entities need to be so like, uh, uh, strictly regulated? Why is that necessary? Right? Like, why is it that the corporation as an entity is, is so damaging unless it's sort of like held in stasis? Um, and so this led to, I suppose, an early recognition that the corporation was, maybe I hadn't fully come to the recognition, but a sort of dangerous entity, that it had drives which were unhealthy. And so I had developed not a truly anti-capitalist perspective, but maybe what you might say is like an anti-corporate uh, uh, perspective, uh, a belief that there needed to be good, stable regulations to keep capitalism running correctly. You know, I had not gotten outside the capitalist framework. I thought that, you know, that's what we're stuck with. And, uh, you know, just like a liberal, I thought, you know, you got to play inside the system and you got to play by the rules and you just regulate the system as much as you can. You, you got to, you know, keep capitalism on track kind of thing. Then came the 2008 financial crisis. And I recall it feeling sort of like a vindication of my doubts about the corporate system. Uh, and I remember it very distinctly. I remember hearing about the crash. I remember coming home from uh, uh, what I was doing and sitting in the car and listening on the radio about them talking about the, um, you know, uh, Lehman Brothers and so on. And uh, I knew something very important was happening. But I also felt as if, yeah, this is what I would expect. So it led me on a, a path of questioning what was taking place. Why did that happen? You know, why did the 2008 financial crisis take place like that? And uh, in, in seeking those answers, I began to become more interested in politics. And I was already sort of like anti-Iraq war and so on. So I I, I had like this sort of like vague constellation of anti-corporate ideas. And this led me to what was actually a very important documentary for me to, to, to watch called Inside Job. And if any of you are interested in what happened in the 2008 financial crisis, I highly recommend watching Inside Job. It actually is still a, an excellent documentary, um, uh, it, you know, and, and it even has a sort of this sort of stance as well, this sort of anti-corporate or, or, or regulationist stance, you might say. It explains what actually took place in the 2008 financial crisis. But the 2008 financial crisis was um, highly radicalizing for me. So then comes Occupy Wall Street. And Occupy Wall Street was... Um, sort of the first time that I was really encountering radical ideology, um, uh, you know, anti, truly anti-capitalist ideology. And uh, I, I was so fired up from, you know, I was, I was angry about what took place in the 2008 financial crisis. I was uh, still upset about the war in Iraq, uh, uh, you know, and I was seeking an outlet. And Occupy Tulsa provided that outlet. Uh, I go down to, um, you know, downtown Tulsa, 
where the encampment is taking place and I meet a lot of very important people. Um, uh, at least two of them are people that I am still in contact with to, these day, to this day. And in that process, I also learn a huge amount. Uh, this is the period of time where I'm sort of simultaneously learning about, um, you know, kind of like the, the vague roots of anarchism, but more significantly, I'm learning about Marxism. I'm learning about the labor theory of value. I'm learning about um, alienation, uh, a worker, you know, alienation, uh, workers being alienated from uh, production and from one another and, and, and so on. And uh, I begin studying Marx and I become very interested in Marx and, and the theory, you know, the things I've mentioned, but, but more broadly than that, how, what, how Marx thought about these things. Uh, but I wasn't like really settled into either of these perspectives, either the anarchist or the Marxist perspective. I was sort of just like taking it all in. And uh, I was beginning to develop a, a sort of like vaguely, ant, ant, or not vaguely, but more specifically anti-capitalist perspective. But I would not still at this point not fully developed my, my anarchism. I'd not really recognized that the problem was, was more broad than capitalism. It was more broad than corporations and regulation and so on. So during Occupy, I was studying all these things and learning, you know, the kind of books I might have been reading at that time were like uh, A People's History of the United States, for example. So I was learning, I was kind of like listening to Howard Zinn and um, Noam Chomsky and a variety of other people uh, at the time. Um, this was also, might I add, the first time I had ever heard of uh, Bernie Sanders. I remember us discussing Bernie Sanders at the encampment and talking about how like, oh my God, there is actually one good congressman and so on. It was also when I became sort of familiarized with, um, uh, you know, the corrupting influence of money and politics and all of this. So what happened was after uh, Occupy Wall Street and after, after Occupy Tulsa, you know, fell apart in about 2012. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in there I would talk about, but, you know, just staying on track. Uh, I began to seek even deeper answers. I wanted to understand not only what does it look like, you know, uh, to, to have a, 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 a strong analytical framework for how all of this works, but like, what is good organization? And like, in what capacity is revolution actually uh, possible? And in this process, I began to read more anarchist literature and anarchist perspectives. And I began to feel as if they made a lot more sense than what I was reading from people who were calling themselves Marxists, which I think everybody at this point is pretty familiar with my perspective on that. But what I was realizing was that the problem rooted to something deeper than just economics but nonetheless, I still kind of maintained a, 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 I wasn't like an economic reductionist insofar as I didn't think only economics were important or that the economics were the only de determining factor, but I thought that it was the thing we had to focus on, right? I thought, that was, I thought it was the place where, you know, we would all could be unified on it and we could get the work done on that. Uh, but I had not fully rejected every higher working within every hierarchical power structure. So though at about this point I began identifying as like anarcho syndicalist, I don't think at this point I still had a really solid understanding of anarchist theory and I was not widely read. I was actually a be better read in Marxism at this point than I was in anarchism. My only, you know, encounter with anarchism at that time was Noam Chomsky. And I think most people who are kind of like familiar with anarchist theory will know what, I, what that means. You know, that uh, it's not, not a very strong understanding if all you've got is Noam, Noam Chomsky. But like over those years, um, you know, what, what would ensue? Uh, we would get both of the Bernie campaigns. And during these Bernie campaigns, as I said, I was still not, I'd still not like stepped outside of electoral politics. I'd still not d divested myself from this sort of like statist perspective. And I was still, you know, 
thinking of things in like the framework of like harm reduction, you know, how much can we reduce the damage of this society? How much can we use every tool that's available to us? But I did start to, during this period of time, actually learn more anarchist theory, even though I had not come all the way. Uh, I, I did start to become an avowed revolutionary. And I, I really had a much more explicitly anti-capitalist understanding. But I still had these delusions about thinking that I could, you know, we could work inside the state or, you know, we could, oh, we could get lots of social Democrats uh, elected and it would be good for us. And, and that's, that's how we should, we should proceed through this. Um, so the end of that was Bernie's second run. And I think this was a very important experience for me. Um, if you go back and you look at my old Twitter, you can dig up like all these old Twitter posts where I was like so pro Bernie and I was like all in on justice Democrats and all this stuff. And I think, you know, that that's sort of like an artifact of that of that that stage in my my development. But then I actually began to like kind of like read anarchist theory in depth and understand the arguments that were at the foundations. I began to understand what had taken, excuse me, uh, what had taken place during the Bernie campaign, what it represented, and also like started to, to research what had taken place in a bunch of like social democracies. This was about the time as well that I read uh, a very, very important work in my development. And that was The Bolsheviks and Workers' Control by Maurice Brinton. Um, at the, around the same time, I was reading um, Alexander Berkman's uh, My Disillusionment in, in Russia, I believe is what it was called. But, you know, up until this point, I had all actually been like basically left unity. You know, I thought, oh, OK, you know, capitalism so powerful. We need to cooperate with one another. And uh, I uh, uh, it would have been the sort of person that I now it annoys me enormously uh, who would have said, you know, we need to cooperate. We need to work together. We need to, you know, develop a line we can all agree on and so on. But after reading Bolshe the Bolsheviks and Workers Control and uh, Alexander Berkman's uh, diaries from when he went to Russia, this was an enormously radicalizing experience because what it did was it brought home to me that the problem was hierarchical power structures and that there was no way you could make hierarchical power structures act other than the way they are structured. They're structured for the purpose of domination and, um, uh, you know, authoritarianism, uh, monopolization of power. That's what they're inherently built to do. And it doesn't matter how good the ideas are of the people that are inside them. It doesn't matter how good of a political operator you are. The, the structure itself is not built to do what you want. So, um... This is also kind of like vaguely about the time that I decided I wanted to start this channel. Uh, when I decided to start Anarch, uh, I was, like I said, kind of like, okay, well read. But I, but after starting Anarch was an enormous jump in um, the amount of theory that I was reading. You know, the, the, the pressure to get things right, it turns out, is a pretty significant pressure. And so I began to read a lot of theory. I began to read, I, I read so much theory in that first like a year or so. And I read, in an, I read all over the place. It, it almost like blurs together. You know, sometimes people will ask me, have you read X? And I'll have a hard time even remembering because I read so much stuff in that, in that like first year or so that I can barely even remember, you know, what did I read in full? What did I skim? You know, like all of that. So it can be very difficult, 
but like I was reading anarchist literature, I was reading um, uh, Marx, I was reading, you know, authoritarian left literature, I was reading, you know, like Lenin and, and Mao and Stalin and so on. And I was becoming much more confident that anarchism was the answer as I did so because anarchism was the only thing that was answering all the questions for me. Anarchism was the only thing that was standing up to, to complete scrutiny. Everything else would like be right in one place and then wrong in others and would, you know, have this really bad track record of, of creating oppressive structures and so on. And I became more and more committed to an anarchist perspective. Uh, it, it became very clear to me as I proceeded through reading all of this that anarchism was the only analytical framework that was able to actually help me understand why everything was happening as it was. And it was the first time that I felt as if I actually was like able to understand what was going to happen. I was able to sort of like predict what the outcome of, of certain you know, events was going to be. I was able to look at the large arc of events and see how it was going to tend in a particular direction. I was going to be able, I was able to look at politics and they were actually like, like um, legible for the first time. I could actually understand what was happening in a way that I had never been able to beforehand. Uh, and that drove me to read more and more and more. And as I uh, kept writing more and more of these essays, I started to, you know, branch out into all kinds of subtopics of anarchism as well. And further, reading just kind of like a broad array of different kinds of literature. You know, I was reading literature from, from liberals. I was reading authoritarian left literature. I was reading anarchist and, and, and like, you know, generally libertarian socialist literature. And um, I was starting to, I, you know, was developing a much, much stronger analytic framework. And this is part of the reason why I encourage people to read theory. Uh, uh, you know, there's this weird feeling that, that people have. It's almost like they like express this idea that, um, you know, it's not really important to read theory. It's just good to understand uh, practice. Uh, you know, a theory is just, a, you know, a bunch of books uh, that, that have like this arcane uh, knowledge in it. They're just thick tomes, of the words of old white men and so on. And like that I don't think is accurate. I mean, obviously it's true that most of them are white men, <laughs> but I mean to say theory is extremely important. It's going to be very difficult to act in a way that is coherent and effective if you don't have a good theoretical foundation. And I say this because I acted ineffectively before I had a better theoretical foundation. And that is, that is part of the reason why I now encourage people to read theory so much. I would also like to encourage people to write, to actually write about the things they know about and the things that, 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 you know, uh, occur in their lives, the things that are, that they are uniquely oriented to have knowledge about, write about those. Because what you'll find is that when you write, you will be um, forced to take positions and then you will have to justify those positions and make sure that your arguments make sense. You will also have to like analyze your own arguments and so on, right? So what I will say is, when was I an anarchist? Uh, that's sort of a hard thing to define, right? Like a, it's, a, it's a fuzzy boundary. I've become more and more of an anarchist over time. The, the framework makes more and more sense to me the more I understand it and apply it to the world. So here I am now having read a lot of anarchist literature, a huge amount. Um, and I would say I am most certainly an anarchist uh, at this point. Uh, you know, I no longer identify as an anarcho-syndicalist for reasons I could go on about in a different video. But, you know... This is, this is the story of how I got here. You know, this is, this is sort of like the broad strokes of, uh, of the different events, which, which led me to having this perspective. Um, 
And at this point, it's very hard for me to imagine that I will ever not be an anarchist. Uh, I've read the, the, the opposing literature. I've read a large amount of, of anarchist literature. And I have assessed at this point that anarchists have the answers in a general sense. Um, and uh, I would encourage you all to read more theory as well. I would encourage you to try to find things that are, you know, <clears throat> not only like general overviews of anarchism, but also uh, things that apply to your, your, your interests in anarchism. Explore that. Explore that. Um, and that's also part of the reason why I'm doing the channel, right? Part of the reason I'm doing the channel is to spread this knowledge. I recognize that, you know, education is a big aspect of struggling successfully. So I am trying to bring the knowledge that I have discovered to you all. And I hope, I hope you appreciate that. It takes a huge amount of work. Um, you know, I put a large amount of effort into making sure that I get all the details right. And I want you to understand why I am confident in anarchism, why I hold this perspective and why I think that there should be many, many more anarchists. So, uh, that is pretty much an overview. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this and that it kind of like broadly answered your questions. Uh, I think, I, I think I, I covered all the bases here, all the, the big, the big parts. Um, if there is a topic that you would like me to cover, uh, obviously feel free to uh, comment down below. Also, if you have any thoughts or, or ideas about the video at all, uh, go down there and comment. Tell me how you feel about it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please go subscribe. Uh, you know, obviously it makes a big difference. Um, if you, uh, if you, you, you know, really enjoy the content that I'm creating here, uh, go become a patron at my Patreon. Uh, it, it is, it is, you know, really important to me. It makes, it makes a big difference in my life. Uh, I cannot tell you how important it is for, you know, you all to support me. It helps me spend more time on the channel, uh, as I proceed. Uh, you know, I, I do not live a life of luxury and the more the Patreon grows, the more I can actually kind of like live a comfortable life and not have to like stress about bills and so on. Um, also last thing I would mention, if you do want to suggest a topic for these anarcha bridged, uh, you know, I will give preference to patrons in that process. Uh, this one was actually one of the ones that a patron suggested a while back. So, Anyway, uh, I will see y'all next time. Hope you enjoyed the video.